Hey, Lanny, how you doing today? Very good. Uh, is this still a good time to ask you a few questions today? That's good. Well, first, uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the uh, the new comic book you've got coming up, The Genius Lanny Poffo. Can you tell us a bit about that and, I guess, how that idea came about? Well, I can't really... Uh, I was just very lucky to have been selected. They've already done a comic book for Nikolai Volkov, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and then I was approached by John Crowther, and he asked me if I would do my biography in comic book form. And I thought that wasn't a bad idea. After all, I'm in good company, right? With Hacksaw. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I've seen uh, some of the other ones that are out already. And, um, you know, they, they look great. And uh, I know you've got a, a Kickstarter campaign in the works. And you got a lot of cool stuff on there for the fans if they contribute. Yes, uh, but I'm not the one giving the cool stuff. John Crowther is doing everything. And uh, I think the uh, they need $4,000, and they're already up to, like, $2,800, and it's only been a few days, so we're going to easily surpass our goal of $4,000. Excellent. I know you've uh, had some books out yourself uh, over the years. Uh, do you think maybe you'll have any more uh, books on the way after the comic book is out? I definitely will not. No, I'm, I'm a, I am retired and I'm very lazy, <laughs> so uh, that's the story. <laughs> I did limericks from the heart and lungs and wrestling with rhyme. Um one, uh, both of them kind of children's books. But this is a comic book, a real chance to be serious literature. Well, I know, as you mentioned, uh, the comic book kind of looks at your career. And, um, you know, your early days uh, wrestling uh, with your father and your brother, uh, some of the newer fans uh, probably haven't uh, experienced any of that or have been able to, to see any of those early days. That's right. Uh, you know, a lot of wrestlers uh, have to... Um, you know, go to a wrestling school and they take their money and sometimes they teach them and sometimes they don't. So I was lucky to have a father that was a professional wrestler that avoided the uh, first step, which is getting your foot in the door. Well, with, when it comes to all that old footage, uh, are you in possession of all that? Will it maybe see the light of day sometime? No, I don't really save my fingernail clipping, you know, once they're clipped. <laughs> so... I'm not really interested in seeing old footage of when I really sucked. So, <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it takes years to get presentable, and then uh, I just got offered a chance to wrestle now, and I said, hey, I'm 63 years old. It's time to let it go. Wow. So I refused. Well, back in the day, uh, you know, when you and your brother made it over to the WWF, you know, you were really the first guy I remember seeing a lot of, uh, you know, do a lot of the moonsaults and, and the high-flying stuff. I mean, it doesn't seem like you get the uh, the recognition you deserve for uh, for your work back then. Well, people claim that I was the first guy to do the moonsault, and I guarantee you, yes, I did invent the move moments after I saw Tiger Mask do it in a videotape against the Dynamite Kid. So I did not invent the moonsault. So, uh, but thank you anyway. I appreciate it. Well, I know you and Randy worked a lot together uh, early on, but uh, was there ever maybe any consideration for you guys uh, to work together in the WWF when you came up? The only time we were in the same ring was when I inducted him, uh, Macho King. Remember that wonderful moment? Definitely. Yes, I got to do a poem for him, and that was the only time we were in the ring together. And then, of course, I inducted him into the Wrestling Hall of Fame, the WWE Hall of Fame. So those are the only two ch times that our ships crossed. And um, phenomenal person Randy was, too, and uh, I think about him every single day. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he was my favorite uh, growing up, and, and I know it wasn't an easy decision uh, for you to to allow them to uh, put Randy into the Hall of Fame, but, um, you know, it's great that uh, he's in there. Uh, it's unfortunate, the circumstances, but, I mean, what is your relationship like uh, with them now, if there is any? I haven't seen them since I inducted Randy into the Hall of Fame. And uh, they, they send me money four times a year. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's too bad that uh, things uh, ended up the way they did. But, you know, as you mentioned, you, you had so many great years there. And, uh, you know, when you uh, did the genius uh, character uh, with the poems, uh, that was uh, definitely my favorite time of years. I wanted to ask you about, the, I guess, the process of, of writing the poems. Did you kind of have to do them maybe the day of the match? Or what was the process like? Oh, yeah, the, especially Jay Strongbow. He would never tell me who I was wrestling. One time I said, hey, can you tell me who I'm wrestling so I can write a better poem? And he looked at me and said, oh, I hate your gimmick. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, 
like the card player had said, no help from him. So I got myself a 49-cent spiral notebook, and I wrote poetry about any possible competitor I might have had, and then I wrote generic ones to cover my butt in case, uh, you know, they threw me against somebody else. So that was how I did my gimmick, with absolutely no help from Jay Strongbow. Well, that uh, the poems worked so well when you came in, uh, when you were uh, when you were a good guy. But uh, you know, you were able to just kind of give it that tweak uh, when you turned heel, and uh, it made it even better, I think. Well, thank you very much. You know, it was a lot more fun and a lot easier to make people hate me uh, when I was a heel. I, I remember my first time uh, that I was trying to prove I could work heel. I was in Boston Garden, and I, I insulted their sports team. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> If they only knew that I didn't even care about their sports teams. I just so then then I went to Omaha and uh, I insulted the Cornhuskers. And uh, so I said, This is the easiest gig in the world. Whatever city I'm in, I'll just do a poem against their sports teams. And that's like that's like what you call cheap heat. Well, do you still have all the uh, the notebooks you mentioned that have the poems? Maybe we could uh, see those uh, released someday. Uh, no, I've got two books out. I've been published twice. So, um, but if you go on GeniusLannyPapo.com, you can get my, you know, the, the poems I thought were good enough to publish. Excellent. I, I wanted to ask you, Lanny, um, I, as I mentioned, I was a huge fan of your brother's and of yours, and I wanted to ask uh, your uh, memories of when Randy uh, decided to make uh, the Be a Man album. I mean, it seems like a weird concept on paper, but I think the finished product is amazing. Do you have any stories maybe behind, uh, I guess, how that came to fruition? Well, I'll tell you what. You see, Randy had a spat with Hulk Hogan. Um, and I felt like I was in the middle because I love Randy and I love Hulk Hogan. Uh, after all, uh, you must know that he did something very, very nice for me when I was the genius on NBC. Sure. Uh, do you remember this fateful night? Um, yeah, when you and uh, Mr. Perfect took the belt. Uh, was it Saturday night's main event? It was Saturday Night Made Event. I wrestled against Hulk Hogan, and um, and then we stole the belt and smashed the belt. But that was the uh, closest thing to relevance I've ever been. And, um, you know, Randy asked me to, uh, well, if you don't want to do anything against Hulk Hogan, can you do something for Mr. Perfect? And I wrote The Perfect Friends, which is one of the more benign songs on that album. And... Um, you know, Randy thought that they were going to sell about 30 million uh, records, and it turned out they only sold 90,000, so he thought that was a huge disappointment. So, because he really worked hard on his rap, and uh, I'll tell you what, and I don't mind telling your listeners, rap is not my favorite genre. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> so, I, I, uh, I don't like rap music. Is that wrong to say? Um, I like uh, Broadway musicals. I like good music. And uh, I like oldies, like the Beach Boys, the Beatles. Sure. But that's just, that's just uh, I don't get any further than that. Well, as you mentioned, uh, he, he obviously did work hard on it. Uh, I mean, it would be easy to put out an album and kind of just be, uh, I guess, a novelty thing. But, I mean, you could tell that he uh, really uh, put the time into it. And, I mean, it, it, it holds up with a lot of uh, other rap albums around that time, I think. Well, I spell rap with a C, so uh, I don't know if that's uh, damning you with faint praise or whatever. <laughs> well, Lanny, I've seen um, floating around uh, a single that you released uh, years ago, you know, the, with The Policeman Is Your Friend. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, it's, I was surprised to find that that was out there. If you've got three minutes, I'll recite it for you. Do you have three minutes? Oh, definitely. He never gets the credit. He only takes the blame. Everywhere he goes, it's always more of the same. When layman meets policemen, you know that it's a fact. They smile at his face and call him pig behind his back. He's the man who walks the beat. When you see him on the street, tell him thanks because he has a thankless job with little pay. You think that he's a big disgrace with his nightstick on his mace, but he's a servant of the people, and he proves it every day. Sometimes when the media puts down the man in blue, the public turns against him, even though it isn't true. And I've wondered how they stood up under so much public hate since the Democrat Convention of Chicago, 68. While we sing for unsung heroes, let us not forget his wife. 
Every waking hour, she is fearing for his life. Through loneliness and worry, she does what she must do, a sacrifice she makes while he's protecting me and you. You talk of bribes, corruption, and police brutality. It paints an ugly picture and reflects on you and me. You condemn the whole police force for what one man does alone. If there's a perfect man among you, let him cast a righteous stone. Remember this, because while you're putting down the man in blue, the next ungrateful life he saved might very well be you. Now my testimonial is coming to an end. I hope that it reminds you. The policeman is your friend. Excellent. You just uh, you just made my day with that. Oh, thank you. And, you know, oh, there's so many policemen that are being persecuted for righteousness right now. It's pathetic. And uh, I want all your listeners to know that I'm on their team. Awesome. Well, uh, again, Lanny, I really appreciate your time today. And again, uh, the comic book uh, will be out here soon. Uh, do you have anything else uh, maybe in the works or anything else upcoming? Well, I don't know. It's kind of like um, each day is a miracle. Um, I've become a severe uh, health nut. And uh, I'm living on greens, onions, mushrooms, beans, berries, and seeds. And I'm also an intermittent faster, which means uh, I, I don't eat um, I, 24 hours a week. I do a, I do a one-day fast uh, once a week. I do three days once a month. And I do seven to ten days four times a year. Now, if you don't believe that's a little crazy, um, look up the word autophagy in the dictionary. And um, people say I look good for 63 and um, I think they're right, but it's no accident. I've had some work done. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's great to hear that you're in a good place and doing well. And, you know, again, I'm excited for the, the comic book. I've already made my pledge, and uh, hopefully we see some more stuff from you down the road. Well, please encourage other people to make their pledge, too, and uh, so we can get this $4,000 taken care of. And uh, I appreciate uh, of all the interviews I've ever had, you know, Yours is by far the most recent. <laughs> well, I appreciate. It. I'll be. I'll be making sure to uh, to drop that around when I talk to people. Listen, thanks for never interrupting me. Boy, do I hate that. And uh, I appreciate uh, your very. Uh, and you know your subject. You know, it's like sometimes I get interviewed and people don't know. I like uh, this. Reminds me of Jiminy Glick. You know, you know that uh, character. Yeah, was that um, Martin Short? I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's Martin Short. He's fantastic. I go on YouTube and I watch all the Jiminy Glicks I can find. <laughs> awesome. Again, uh, Lanny, I'm a huge fan, and uh, you've made uh, you made my day. Thank you so much for your time. Dustin, let me tell you what. Sometimes I hate doing interviews. You are fantastic, and I appreciate the fact that you did not interrupt. And uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. And uh, again, good luck with everything. And maybe we'll uh, speak with you again sometime. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.